In Climate Watch, a new report from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration finds that despite global shutdowns during the pandemic, greenhouse gas levels in 2020 surged. In fact, levels of carbon dioxide are at the highest they've been in 3.6 million years. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Pirardelli. Jeff, uh... I want to talk to you about NOAA's research and how significant those findings are. But mm -hmm. first of all, that that graphic behind you looks awfully scary. I, I'm imagining that what you're about to tell us is, <laughs> is not good news. Well, what's behind me is just basically how much we've warmed, how much the Earth, the earth has warmed really just in the past 200, 150 years or so. Yeah, I mean, think about that. Carbon dioxide is the highest it's been in 3.6 million years. Whenever I discuss this, what comes to mind immediately is we are the unwitting guinea pigs in this global life or death experiment. We've caused carbon dioxide to rise to levels that we haven't seen in millions of years, and we don't know exactly what those consequences are going to be. Just to give you an idea, we are a force of nature. We have about 8 billion people on this earth right now. And carbon dioxide is... Jeff, did we lose you? Uh, am I back now? <laughs> I should be back now. All right, Jeff, yes. Uh, so let me just continue. Please. Yeah, okay. Let me just continue what I was saying. So carbon dioxide is going up at the pace 100 times faster than it naturally should right now. Think about that. Carbon dioxide is rising at 100 times the pace that it naturally should. And because of that, because carbon dioxide has, has the properties that trap heat, our temperatures are rising at 10 times the rate of any time in the past 65 million years. So since the dinosaurs were around. Uh, so, you know, this really is a, a, a situation where we just have to hope that we can adapt fast enough and we have to do everything we can to limit the amount of greenhouse gases that we put into the atmosphere. Yeah, we're guinea pigs, but we're controlling the levers of power on that, Jeff. So That's true. what did Noah's That's true, report yeah. say about the impacts of, of methane on our planet? So methane, we don't talk about as much as we talk about carbon dioxide, but actually methane is responsible for 25% of the excess heat that humans are trapping. Now, methane has gone up 250% since the 1700s. Carbon dioxide has gone up 50%. That's really bad. But 250% is even worse, and methane is actually 30 times more powerful a heat-trapping gas than carbon dioxide. So methane is bad, and it continues to go up. It's going up because of livestock, mostly. Uh, also because of wetlands, and then in addition because of leakage from oil and gas uh, production. So all of this, uh, as I predicted, not good news. Are there things that we need to be doing right now, that we can be doing right now, to limit warming to a manageable temperature? So manageable, you know, is defined by the IPCC, or the Paris Climate Accord, as about 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius of warming. We've already warmed by around 1.2 degrees Celsius. So to stay at 1.5 degrees Celsius, it means we'd have to cut our emissions by 50% in the next nine years. That's virtually impossible. It's, it's likely not going to happen, but we, we could make it happen, but it would take, you know, turning the Titanic or, uh, you know, a huge freight ship really, really, really quickly. And that's, it's going to be very hard. Now, we could still stay below 2 degrees Celsius. That would mean very significant and, and bad changes would happen on Earth, but we'd be able to adapt. But right now, business as usual is three degrees Celsius of warming. And at that point, a lot of life on Earth would struggle to survive. Many species are going to go extinct. Many more will go extinct if we, if we hit that high level. I would just say this. We're kind of like uh, frogs in a, 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 a pot of water boiling slowly. We don't necessarily notice it, but by the time we notice it, it's too late. So you've heard, I'm sure, that analogy, Lana. And it, it kind of is appropriate. Right. You know, it's happening gradually enough so that we don't notice it, but... By the time we really take note and start moving, we don't want it to be too late. So time for action is right now. Yeah, again, I'm thinking of ourselves, though, as those frogs controlling the stove. All right, Jeff, thank you. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're welcome.